Okay, uh, welcome folks. Um, all right, today's lesson is gonna be on factorial counting. Before we jump into that, I just wanna remind you why we're talking about counting principles. Um, and it's to be able to count the number of possible outcomes in various situations. So, so far we've learned about the fundamental counting principle, which just sort of says that if you take the number of outcomes of each experiment, and multiply them together, that will tell you um, the number of possible outcomes when you're running multiple experiments. Today we're gonna to talk about factorial counting. And factorial counting counts the number of ways to order n objects. So if you've got a certain number of objects, factorials can tell you the number of different ways that they can be arranged. Um, an application, this is an application of the fundamental counting principle that's used when repetition isn't allowed. So we'll see that kind of with some uh, examples coming up here about how it's an application of the fundamental counting principle uh, that's used when repetition isn't allowed. Okay, so computing factorials. Um, so we'll start with four factorial. What does this mean? What it really means is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. 5 factorial is really just 5 times 4 factorial, or 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so that ends up being 120. Same thing with 6 factorial, that's really just 6 times 5 factorial which equals six times five times four times three times two times one. If we want to say this generally, and, oh sorry, and that equals 720. If we want to say this generally, n factorial will equal n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to three times two times one. Now this is assuming that, you know, um, n is at least 6, right? If you're just doing 2 factorial, then that's just 2 times 1. Okay, let's keep moving. Factorial counting counts the number of ways to order n objects, so consider ordering the flavors of ice cream on an ice cream cone. So how many ways would there be to order an ice cream cone with only one flavor, vanilla? So you could do vanilla, and that's really the only way to order it, right? Because there's only one flavor to choose from. So that's one factorial or one way to order that. Let's get a little bit more complex. Now let's see how many ways there are to order it if there are two flavors. So vanilla and chocolate. Vanilla chocolate, chocolate vanilla. So then we get 2 factorial, and that equals 2, times 1, which is 2. Okay, um, so now let's think about it with three flavors. Vanilla chocolate and strawberry. So we've got vanilla chocolate strawberry, vanilla strawberry chocolate. Okay, so those are all the options when we start with vanilla. Now let's start with chocolate. So we can do chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, or chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. Now let's do the options where we start with strawberry. Strawberry, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla. This is just three factorial, or three times two times one, which is six. So again, we can see that when we listed out the combination, that lines up with our answer that we got with using the factorial. All right, let's keep moving. Count the number of ways to order n objects. Consider ordering the flavors of ice cream on an ice cream cone with four different flavors. So vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and pistachio. Write out all the ways these flavors can be ordered. Calculate, excuse me, calculate the number of ways these flavors can be ordered with a factorial. 
we'll start by listing them out. So vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, pistachio. Then we'll do vanilla, chocolate, pistachio, strawberry. So in this first box here, they're all going to start with vanilla. And now we've done the two options where chocolate is our second option. And so now let's do strawberry as our second option. So it'll be strawberry, chocolate, pistachio, straw, uh, strawberry, pistachio, chocolate. Uh, for our third three options. And then now let's do the ones where we start with pistachio. So vanilla, pistachio, chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, pistachio, strawberry, chocolate. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing in the next box, but now we'll start with chocolate instead of vanilla. And so again, we'll see there's six more options. Do the same thing in the next box, but then we'll start with strawberry. And in the last box, we'll start with pistachio. We've got four boxes. Each of those boxes has six different arrangements in them. So four times six is 24. Um, and we can also calculate that using a factorial. So four factorial equals four times three times two times one, which equals 24. Okay, hopefully this is starting to make sense. Um, and hopefully you're seeing how you could compute this, you know, if you had a calculator, right? Just take four times three times two times one. Okay, consider ordering the flavors of ice cream on an ice cream cone with 10 different flavors. So you'll notice for this one that I'm not telling you to list out all the options and you'll, we'll see why in a second here. So 10 factorial, it's 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. This is equal to 3,628,800. So at this point, it's just impractical to list out all the different combinations because well, there's 3.6 million of them. Right, so at a certain point, you, it's just a matter of um, using your formula, but it's it's good to list out all the options because it helps you see um, helps you see where the formula is coming from. Okay, Mr. Brunswold is about to have a new baby and was generously gifted a lot of baby clothes. For example, he was given three different sweatshirts sized for a three to six month old baby, one red, one blue, one yellow. Mrs. Brunswold wants to stack the sweatshirts in a bin with the rest of the clothes for a three to six month old baby. List out all the possible ways that Mrs. Brunswold could stack the clothes, then use factorials to ensure that you counted all the different ways. Okay. so. You could imagine Mrs. Brunswold could do the red, then the blue, then the yellow. She could do the red, then the yellow, then the blue. Those are the options where the red one is on top. She could put the blue one on top. Oh. Huh. I didn't notice. There's a mistake here. Let me fix that. Probably have to fix that on the next couple of slides as well. So give me a second to do that. Sorry, I have to do this in the middle of the video. Okay. And so we get blue, red, yellow, and then blue, yellow, red. And then let's do the options where we start with yellow. Yellow, red, blue, yellow, blue, red. This is three factorial or three times two times one options, which equals six. Okay, one final example. Mr. Brunswold is running errands. He needs to go to the grocery store, fill up his car with gas, mill a letter, and return an online order. 
List out all the ways that he could run these four errands, then use factorials to ensure that he counted all of the ways. So he could get gas, fill up his, excuse me, he could go to the grocery store, fill up his car, mail his letter, and then return the online order. And so again, kind of similar to how I did this with the ice cream cones, um, we're just going to um, kind of start by fixing this first variable. And then I fix the second option. So he's going, I'm going to uh, fill up my car with gas second. So you can see there's two different ways to order the other two events. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now let's put mailing the letter second. Again, there's two ways to do the last two events. Okay, now let's put return the order second. So you can see there's six different ways to do it. If, you, if I go to the grocery store first, and so then there's four different options for what I could pick for my first option. So we get six times four or 24. Four factorial equals four times three times two times one. Um, whoops, we're just making mistakes all over the place here. There we go. Or 24 different options. Okay, reach out to me if you have any questions about factorial counting, folks.